What up guys? It's one o'clock in the morning. Just got home from work. Just thought I'd drop a quick video for you guys. I was just about to eat and I started thinking about food boluses. Let me see what the time is. There's a clock. Just in case. You know, the average person that comes in with a food bolus that feels like they have something stuck in their throat. The piece of meat or whatever it is is usually like five centimeters by three centimeters. So that's why I've got a tape measure here with my steak. All right, I cut it. So this is about five by three centimeters. This is the average food bolus that gets stuck in people's throat. I mean, people are not chewing their food. Seriously, they just chucking this in there. Like, look, look at the size of this. Five by three centimeters. They try to get it down their throats. These people are crazy, man. And you know their esophagus is only 22 millimeters uh, in width, right? That's two, I mean, 20 millimeters, 20, 22 millimeters. That's two centimeters, guys. And these guys are trying to swallow this. What kind of rush are you in? Let's break down, uh, I'll break down food bolus is another day. Let's talk about, let's talk about foreign bodies with kiddos. I had one today actually. Uh, let me get a let me get a piece of paper. All right, let's talk about foreign bodies and kiddos here. Oh man! So I had a kid come in, and the mom was saying that um, kiddo is not really eating well. You know. She kind of presented saying that the kiddo's got uh, some flu-like symptoms. So, you know, I kind of just directed it towards strep throat, you know, upper respiratory infection. Uh, she did mention the kid had a mild cough. So, I went ahead and did a strep and flu and also checked... Uh, uh, and then I, something inside of me said, you know, let's just do a chest x-ray look at the kid's lungs. Lungs were relatively clear, um, but when I did try to examine the kid's throat, the kid wasn't really opening his mouth that wide. I couldn't really get good visualization of his tonsils. But I still didn't think much of it. He wasn't drooling or anything like that. Lo and behold, x-ray tech comes running saying, hey, this kid's got a coin in his throat. So, well, 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 what do we have here? Typical, typical fashion. So, what do we have here? Foreign body, right? What type of foreign bodies do we get with these kiddos? Coins, batteries, buttons, toys. Kids will eat anything. Signs and symptoms, dysphagia, choking. Now this kid wasn't choking, he was just quiet. I just thought, oh, maybe he's scared, gagging. He wasn't gagging either, drooling, unable to swallow, vomiting. Well, they'll describe it as vomiting, but it's usually drooling. These are the kind of signs and symptoms that you got to watch out for. I was headed in the wrong direction with this kid. I could have missed the foreign body, right? So what do we know about foreign bodies? Well, there's four main places that these foreign bodies can get stuck in, right? You got the upper esophageal sphincter, the aortic arch, left main bronchus sorry I'm trying to hold the camera and do this for you and the lower esophageal sphincter those are the four main areas that food can get stuck in okay 75% of this is going to be a coin. 
And the best way to um, catch this is an x-ray. You want to do an AP and lateral views. Um, in this case, I just did an AP, a one view chest, and I saw it. But you also want to get a lateral view. Always get a lateral view. Okay. Now, here's the thing that I had a difficult time with. Distinguishing whether it's in the esophagus or the trachea. It's real simple, guys. If it shows up on the AP view and it's in face, that means the face of the coin is facing you, um, it's in the esophagus. So in face, AP equals esophagus. So in face, AP equals esophagus. Right, so if you can if you can imagine you can see the coin of the the face of the coin, that means it's in the esophagus. If you can't see the face of the coin, let's say that's the esophagus, and the coin is like that, that most likely means that it's in the trachea. Let me show you a quick example. Hold on. So here's a good good example right here. It's in the esophagus it's going to appear in face so you'll be able to see the face of the coin or it will appear round on the front of you and on the lateral view or should I say like in a flat type of a type of uh, motion so it's flat on the lateral view and the front view it's nice and round that means it's in the esophagus it would be the opposite of the way around if it was in the trachea it will appear flat here and it will appear round on the lateral view. Okay? Real simple. I'm dropping those jewels. What time is it? 1.38. Just coming from work. Dropping those jewels for you guys. That is very, very important. So what do you do with these kids? You got to get them out of there. Got to get them scoped. They need an endoscope. They need to have direct visualization and be removed by an expert. <clears throat> so uh, call the gastroenterologist. Let them know what's going on. Um, and get that coin out of there. Do not try to remove the coin yourself. Okay? And if the coin is in the trachea, that's a medical emergency. You wanna hurry up and get that kid out of there. Get him soap and get it out of there. All right. So what happens if this coin has passed all the way down to the lower esophageal junction and is in the stomach? Most likely, it's gonna pass. So you wanna do serial X-rays every day. Q24 hours. So some people like to do serial x-rays every three days. And normally that's what I do. I tell the parents, come back in about three days, follow up with your PCP. I keep an eye for the um, for the coin and the poop. But the kid looks like it'd be okay. Alright? So just a quick recap. Foreign bodies. 75% of them are kiddos. So, um, they're normally observed by the mom ingesting it, but if not, you're going to get some vague signs and symptoms. Maybe the kid's going to be quiet like mine. Uh, dysphagia, choking, gagging, drooling, vomiting. What could it be? Coin, battery, buttons, toys. Alright. Just make sure that uh, you want to get that kid out of there. Recognize what it is and make a plan. Alright. So boy be rich. Let me get back to eating my food. Oh man, I got tape measure in my food. But hey, we're dropping knowledge late at night. Alright, leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know what you guys like to do. How you like to treat these. Do you guys have a hard time when you call um, to get the kid scoped? What do they always do? Is the kid okay? How's the kid looking? Can the kid come in later? You want to emphasize some of these key factors here. Kid appears a little bit choking, drooling, unable to swallow. Make your points. You know, sometimes you get a hard time. 
Um, let me know how you guys like to treat this. Do you guys give glucagon? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Ooh, I'm going to keep an eye on that comment section. Ooh, I want to see who says they give glucagon to this. <laughs> anyway, confessions of an NP, baby. It's a boy. Be rich. I'm out. So why is it good to know the location of the blockage? Where's the coin? Well, if the surgeon asks you, uh, where's the coin, what are you going to say? No, it's in the esophagus? No. It's be, you're professional, guys. Just remember that. So you want to say, oh, it's uh, just distal to the upper esophageal sphincter. Or it's proximal to the aortic arch. Or it's right at the main, left main uh, bronchus. Or you can say, oh, it's proximal to the lower uh, esophageal sphincter. So it's good to know common places where uh, the coin can get lodged and just to be professional. You just don't want to say, uh, oh, it, it, it's, a, it, it's in the esophagus, sir. Uh, a surgeon's not really going to like that.